Hello and welcome to another brief demonstration of the integration of OCL in the Papyrus UML Modeling Workbench in the Mars release of the Eclipse Papyrus project. So today we'll be looking at using OCL to define constraints in our UML profiles. So whereas the UML specification makes extensive use of OCL to define well-formedness rules for the UML meta model itself. So we can also use OCL to define well-formedness rules for our profiles that extend the UML meta model. So it amounts to uh, very much the same thing. So looking at a, an extremely simple example of a UML profile in which we define the concept of serializability from Java for a UML class model. I have a bean stereotype extending the class meta class that defines an attribute that lets me say on a bean class in my Java language model whether that bean is persistible or not. Now, like any good UML profile, there's an accompanying library model that defines or that specifies the concept of serializable from the Java language, which we will make reference to in these profiles constraints. So looking at those constraints, we have a complete OCL document that references the UML meta model and our Java profile for the purpose of defining constraints on both. So in the context of the UML class meta class, we use a nifty capability of OCL to define an additional attribute for that meta class that we can make reference to in our Java in our OCL constraints. So in this case, we add an attribute to the class meta class that determines whether it is Java serializable, by which we mean simply that the class has, by direct or indirect means, a realization relationship with the serializable interface from our library model. Likewise, on the UML property meta class, we add an additional attribute that computes whether the property is serializable in the Java sense, that being a property where the type exists and either is a primitive type or is of a class that is serializable according to this definition above. So that's it for additional uh, OCL constraints or definitions on the UML meta model. In the context of our bean stereotype, stereotypes just being a kind of class as recognized by OCL, we have an invariant constraint that stipulating that if the stereotype indicates the class being persistible, then that class must be serializable in the Java sense, according to our previous definition, and all of its attributes must likewise be Java-wise serializable. So here we make uh, an example of using the let expression to simplify the uh, subsequent expression of, of OCL. So let's apply this profile and its constraints to an example model. So once again, we have a comically simple model of a banking system in which we have persons that may have any number of accounts. This is slightly elaborated from the previous OCL demonstration that we did by having uh, an additional record class as a supertype of accounts. That's just for the purpose of demonstrating how our constraint works. 
one detail to look at. These are two beans as stereotyped from our profile. And in both cases, the bean is indicated as being persistible. So now let's go and load that OCL document into our UML modeling environment, like so. So now those constraints are available for us to evaluate. And let's do that. Let's validate this model. OK, so we found a problem, or a couple of problems. So both of our beans violate this constraint. Why is that? Well, in this case, it's pretty clear that our account bean does not directly or indirectly uh, realize the serializable interface. And probably in the case of the person bean, the problem is that the account properties type, being account, uh, is not a well-formed bean. It's not uh, properly Java serializable. So let's fix that by drawing an interface realization. And because our constraint was expressed in terms of all realized interfaces, this is a realization inherited. That should be fine. So let's save that and validate the model again. OK, well, that's an improvement. So now the person class is no longer complaining because the account property is now of a Java serializable type. But there's still a problem with the account class. And I suspect that the problem is caused by this account kind property not being recognized by our constraint as serializable. Because in fact, we've stipulated that a property is Java serializable if it's a primitive type or it's a serializable class. We forgot to account for enumerations which are not a kind of primitive type, but are like primitive types. They're trivially serializable in Java. So why don't we just go ahead and add this is kind of enumeration. Good. Let us reload. our OCL document. Let us validate the model. And validation successful. That problem is cleared up. All of the properties are now recognized by our constraint as serializable. So that was looking at using a complete OCL document to add constraints to a UML profile and one, mecha one mechanism by which those constraints then may be integrated into Papyrus for the purpose of model validation. Let's look at another way of doing the same thing entirely within the definition of the UML profile itself. So as we've seen before, we can alternatively place OCL constraints directly in a model rather than in an adjunct resource such as a complete OCL document. But we're going to make some slight adjustments because the particular implementation of OCL integration in the Papyrus UML modeling environment doesn't recognize the concrete syntax for a declaration of for example, additional operations and attributes on classes in constraints that are embedded as own rules in some namespace in the UML model. So what we'll do instead for the
is Java serializable properties that we added to the class and property meta classes from UML in the previous example. Instead, we'll define static operations on our bean stereotype that accomplish the same thing. So looking at just one of these as, as an example, we already know what the OCL looks like. The specification is very similar. Looking at all realized interfaces of the class that we pass in as an argument, that one of those interfaces is the serializable interface from our library model. So a different way of accomplishing the same thing that we did before. Now in this case, we have an owned rule of the bean stereotype specifying this invariant constraint that a persistible bean must extend a class that is serializable according to this definition and in which all of its attributes are serializable according to this definition. And in this case we actually did go the extra mile to properly include enumerations in the calculation of this of this is Java serializable. So let's see how this works. Once again, the same user model that has our profile applied has a couple of beans that are persistible. So now the profile itself embeds these constraints so they are included in Papyrus's own native model validation implementation. So let's go and do that. So we see again the same problem that we had before that this persistible constraint is violated on both of these classes. On the one hand because this class does not realize the serializable interface and on the other hand because this class has a property that is not Java serializable according to our definition. So as before, we'll introduce this interface realization and validate the model again. And just like that, both problems are cleared up. This is a serializable class and all of the properties of both classes are serializable. So there you have two different takes on the definition of OCL constraints for UML profiles. Thank you.